You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Rob, they say content is king, but I believe quality is the king of content. Would you agree? I would agree with that. And sometimes in order to get the best quality of my videos and to provide packages that include drone videos, oftentimes I've got to use ground shots. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, Rob, I forget to get those ground shots. So happy up in the air. Uh, yeah, I just <laughs> yeah, I get overwhelmed with excitement and Indeed. wonderlust and I it don't happens. know what to do. It happens to the best of them. Well... I got to say, thank God for videoblocks.com forward slash drone creator, because if it weren't for them, I wouldn't have high quality stock footage to use in my videos when I forgot to get the ground footage. That's right. And if you're like me and you forget to get these ground shots to make your production value seem higher, you're going to want to check out videoblocks.com forward slash drone creator as well, because for a hundred bucks off the annual subscription price, you get access to hundreds of thousands of copyright free clips that you can use in your productions. Check them out, videoblocks.com forward slash drone creator. Well, Rob, happy Tuesday morning to you. Happy Tuesday. Here are we you, are again. Are you ready to do this? I'm ready. I'm not. Let's do it. <laughs> we're, we're still waiting for the caffeine to kick in, but uh, we're hopeful. The energy is coming. Yes. And uh, while we're sitting here, Pix4D is uploading my images to make into a nice, beautiful map. Sounds great. So anyway, Rob, Dig it. today we're talking about flying over people. What does it mean if someone is directly participating? Mm hmm. Instead of asking the FAA, we looked through the black and white, the <laughs> written word. We found what we are looking for to answer this question. Hey, what's up, Paul? What's up, Rob? My name's Jonathan. I'm from Yonkers, New York. I really want to get into the whole drone advocacy. Um, I feel like uh, here in New York, especially where I'm from, not a lot of people fly drones. So I kind of want to be the guy to inform everyone about the ins and outs about drones and the right way to go about them. So I have a question for you guys today, and it's in regards to flying over people. If you have consent, so let's say you decided to film a video for a school and it's for like the senior class and whatever, and they're you know doing some activities outside and whatnot, and you were hired to fly over these people, near them, take pictures and whatnot using your drone. If you have their the school's consent, is that still illegal in terms of the FAA rules? So I look forward to hearing from you guys. Um, I'll be joining, join you soon. And yeah, thank you guys for your time. Jonathan, thank you for the question. It's something that we've talked about, but very, very specifically, it just seems reasonable, Paul, right? That if you got everybody's consent, I don't care if it's two people or 200 people, and everybody on that group signed something that said, eh, I'm cool, they can fly over me, no big deal, that you'd be allowed to. But is that actually the case? You know, it. you would seem that that would make sense. And, you know, his question is not new. In fact, it's been asked by a lot of people. Right. Um, in fact, if we go into the Drone Pilot Field Kit, if you need a Drone Pilot Field Kit, you can get one for free. Go to dronepilotfieldkit.com. Just got to enter your email address in, and voila, 700-page document to protect your behind <laughs> will be right there, ready for you to download. Yep. Um, all right, I'm looking at page 271 of the Drone Pilot Field Kit. Uh, directly, it's page 264 of the FAA Part 107 document. If you want to follow along with me, dear listeners, Edison Electric Institute and the American Public Power Association said the definition of directly participating should be expanded, Rob, to include personnel engaged in related activities, mm -hmm. such as, you know, workers at a power plant. If a small UAS is being used to monitor or an electric utility crew whose work the small UAS is being used to assist, the organizations further propose that such individuals would qualify as directly participating in the operation if they had received a pre-flight briefing described in uh, CFR 14 CFR 107.49. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. 
Some other commenters, including the NBAA and the American Insurance Association, as well as FLIR Systems and the North Carolina Association of Broadcasters, including Skycatch, felt that the FAA should permit small UAS operations over individuals not involved in the UAS operations when those individuals consent to or are made aware of these operations. Exactly what you just said. Right. Several state farm bureaus and the NBA urged the FAA to allow small UAS operations over people not directly involved in an operation so long as the operator notifies these people of the operation before it starts. It sounds Makes ca- sense. Kind of common Reasonable. sense, right? The, even the American Farm Bureau Federation, a number of state farm bureau federations, said the definition should be expanded to include individuals who have been made aware of the presence and approximate flight path of the SUAS in their vicinity. They even claimed that the risk of a small UAS endangering a consenting individual working in a field that who is not directly involved in but is aware of the SUAS is, and I quote, simply too remote to justify a blanket prohibition. Well, do you think that's what the FAA thought? Probably not. On page 274 of the Drone Pilot Field Kit, the term directly participating refers to specific personnel that the remote pilot in command has deemed to be involved with the flight operation of the small unmanned aircraft. Emphasis on flight operation. Yeah. Directly involved A lot of in people that. are like probably focusing on the remote pilot has deemed. Like, right, oh, exactly. I can deem who I want. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no, no, no. Hold on one second. <laughs> I'm going to keep reading this paragraph. These include the remote pilot in command, the person manipulating the controls of the small UAS, and the visual observer. These personnel also include any person who is necessary for the safety of the small UAS mm-hmm. flight operation. For example, if a small UAS operation employs a person whose duties are to maintain a perimeter to ensure that other people do not enter the area of operation, that person would be considered a direct participant in the flight operation of a small UAS. Anyone else would not be considered a direct participant in the small UAS operation. So they've actually kind of narrowed it down pretty well for us. Whether you like it or not, in this particular response to all of these questions, they've done that. Very true. Um, You know, uh, the swiper in me um, is like saying, well, wait, hold hold on, wait a minute. Hold on, wait a minute. Um, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking like, well, if I, uh, I, I'm thinking of a particular client that we have had, okay, I'm not going to name this group company, it's very large, mm-hmm. um, who flies construction jobs weekly, mm-hmm. their, their own construction jobs, mm-hmm. and um, oftentimes, you know, they notify everyone, but there could be a flyover here or there, but all the guys are wearing hard hats. Right. Does that safely mitigate the risk, number one. Number two, if all of those people were instructed to maintain a perimeter to ensure that other people did not enter exactly. the area of operation, is that someone considered a direct participant? Right, so you've got like 200 people maintaining a safe perimeter. Yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, actually, it would be a really smart way to educate people on yeah. drone law. <laughs> That's funny. Um, you know, that would be my question to the FAA. So guys, if you are listening what about that? What if these people are not only doing their job, but wearing hard hats and attempting to maintain a perimeter to ensure that other people don't enter the area? Or, because if they do actually do that, that's a good thing. They're helping keep a safe environment. Well, and and that particular example in here, as far as maintaining a perimeter, that is just that. It's an example of one way that they're fostering safe environment. Yeah. So you could argue, <laughs> I mean, you're stretching things. There are other ways to foster a safe environment, yes, right? Yes. Again, stretching things. Again, what the FAA sees is in black and white. You just heard it here. It is the, the direct answer of what um, they want you to think. Right, but so carrying on from where you left off, right, it says due to the potential for small unmanned aircraft to harm persons on the ground, the FAA does not consider consent or the need to do other work in the area of operation to be a sufficient mitigation of risk to allow operations over people, which makes sense. I mean, consent doesn't mitigate risk. I mean, that's a ridiculous thing to to say regardless. It's more about are those people who have consented okay with the risk, but the FAA has said we don't care. Which I think is smart because I think what they're trying to do is – uh, stop people from posting a flyers around a concert to be like, you've been notified that there is a drone flying over here. Certainly, yeah. Because I'm not going to lie, 
if I was at a concert mm -hmm. and I saw a drone flying over me, I'd be pissed yeah. because there's nowhere for me to run. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere for me to hide if that thing comes out of the ground or the operator didn't do his KP index uh, pre-flight check. He didn't do his interference check because there's massive interference at concerts. So, But what if you were at that concert and on your way into the concert or when you bought your tickets for the concert, you said, yeah, I'm cool with the drone flying over me. And in your case, let's just assume you know who's going to be flying, so you're comfortable with them and you think they're really good. Uh, but in general, I mean, you would think... I'm not comfortable with anyone that we know <laughs> flying over me, period. Okay. I don't think... I bet there are some people that you would say that you're comfortable with. But that's, that's beside the point. Okay, yourself. <laughs> I'll Fine. fly over myself all day long. That's beside In fact, the point. oftentimes I fly over myself for air conditioning on hot days. <laughs> <laughs> if it's too hot, though, then it's just a heater, so... Actually, yesterday when it was 101 out there at the baseball field, yeah. it worked really well. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Apparently, so, that threshold is not 101. Mm. Phoenix weather, like 115. Anyways. Yeah, no, don't I fly mean, drones I, in Arizona. And a lot of people don't understand that whole heat thing. If, if you don't understand the lapse rate or why it's harder to fly in those extreme hot temperatures, Google it. Well, and I think we have a podcast coming up on that pretty quickly here as well. So you can wait for that too. But no, there's definitely, I would think, a big um, distinction between just a flyer on a post going into a concert versus every single person having to give consent, which would be impractical. And it doesn't matter. The FAA said you can't do it. So yeah, at this which point, you Which I think can't. is also a reaction from what was going on back in the days of the MPTOM, and which is why I also think they rescinded all the MPTOMs. So I don't know. And it's interesting to it is uh, interesting. To, to think about. So, but I'm so happy that the FAA put out this information. It just makes me happy because it's clear. Um, in fact, I was in FISDO a couple weeks ago and we were talking about um, flying over cars and they weren't really clear on flying over cars. Hmm. And then I pulled this up and it was like, well, flying over stationary cars is okay. But if the cars are moving, then the risk is too big and you're not supposed to fly over moving cars. Right. Do people do it all the time, Rob? All yeah. the time. But you can get really cool shots without flying over the car. See, that's another thing, too. Like, I'm going to stick a laser on my drone so it's pointing a big red dot wherever it's flying so people know if I'm flying over them or not. Then like it can't straight be, down? Yeah, then it can't be huh. argued if I'm flying over them or not because the, <laughs> the what, what the FAA says is flying over someone is the tips of their toes to the tips of their fingers. And any flight route that could cause unnecessary harm to that person. Mm -hmm. So if I'm buzzing them at 50 miles an hour and I'm 10 feet away, that's clearly not safe. But right. here's the thing. If I am, let's say I'm flying the big eye, mm -hmm. right? And I probably wouldn't do this anyway. But um, And I'm in one of the areas, the one of the gravel areas between the interchanges where it's about 100 yards by 50 yards. And I had a little red laser pointing straight down and then film that area and then if the FAA ever called me and said hey you can't fly over moving cars and I would be like well I've got a cell phone video of doing that shot of the drone and the red laser pointing down from the drone to show that I wasn't flying over anyone I think that's definitive proof to prove that you are never flying over anyone because there's no arguing there's no hippie coming after you because they said you were flying over them and they were just way too high to realize how high the drone was. So I'm just saying, like, it, there are ways to protect yourself. There are. So. These are things that we go over in the Part 107 operations class, too. I'm not kidding when we talk about competitive advantage. There are ways to CYA. If you don't know what that means, you haven't been working in corporate America, and God bless you. <laughs> so one last point on this. <laughs> you can fly over people if... You get a waiver, a waiver, yeah. right? Which very not few an have authorization, been given. a waiver, right? Yeah, but more have been given out than you think. Really? Yeah. Um, Fleer bought out a company that applied for flying over people, flying from a moving object, flying in certain airspaces, like six different waivers, hmm. and they got all of it. But the company was gone because Fleer picked them up, and I'm pretty sure Fleer only picked them up because of that authorization. Interesting. Or waiver, whatever. Vic would kill me. Anyway, on that bombshell. That's going to do it for us today. If you found this podcast interesting, give us a like, give us a share. Maybe review us wherever you download podcasts, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Overcast, Stitcher, or wherever you get your shows. Leave us a review. It helps other people find out this information. And honestly, guys... We all know a few more pilots could use this information because some of the arguments you see on Facebook are astoundingly amusing. Anyway, that's going to do it for me today. My name's Paul. My name's Rob. This is Ask Drone You.